Hello. Today's slow stitching video uses the couching stitch, but not just any couching stitch. We're going to use a meandering couching stitch. We're going to fill our piece with a single thread. Here I use thick, beautiful blue yarn, and we're just going to couch it down with so simple stitches. Now this is a versatile stitch. You can use any angle, any formation, any spacing, or you can even stitch in pairs if you'd like. I'm just going to create a long, interesting, abstract piece where my yarn covers the entire piece of fabric. Now I like to make lots of angles, lots of turns and squiggles, and it's just a very interesting textured effect. It's simple to do because the couching stitch is a simple stitch. You're just tacking something down. Now I use yarn, but you can use cording, a shoelace, you can make your own cording, use fabric twine that I show in a previous video, or really anything you want. You can even roll up fabric. So let's get started. So for this meandering couching stitch technique, I have a bunch of yarn here. I just cut it from this giant ball of yarn that I have. And I purchase yarn. I do do knitting, but I purchase yarn when I see it, colors that I like. And I'm going to use this for a page of a book, so I'm going to leave a little bit of a margin here. For the couching stitch, though, I want it to be as it says, meandering, so it's just going to fill the page with an abstract design or any design. But instead of pinning it down, because I find that to be very awkward and I always get poked, I'm just going to create a shape that I'll follow here. And I know it's a thick yarn, but I'm just going to sketch something out here. And I'll follow that tacking it down as I go with my couching stitch. So it's kind of a fun technique. I'm going to try and use a single piece of yarn. If I don't have a single piece, then I'll just add to it. It's not a big deal. And I have extra embroidery floss. I've already threaded three needles because I know the meandering stitch moves around a lot and just the distance between stitches takes up a lot of floss. So I'll start here at the top. And I always like to add a little more than I need because I can trim that off later. So I'll hold it down in place with one finger and start tacking it as I go. So I'll start with my stitch and I just tack it down and it couldn't be simpler. So this is a technique that I like to do just to enjoy it. So it's really not a rush technique. For my first stitch, I like to tack multiple stitches and I also want to make sure I don't thread through the back. So I'll tack two or three stitches down side by side and I purposely chose colors of embroidery floss that would blend with my yarn because I love that color yarn. And so far this is what it looks like on the back. And you can see I already have a little bit of a messed up stitch. So I'll just go in here and see if I can remedy it and just pull it snug. And now I'm just going to continue with my couching stitch meandering throughout my piece. I'll speed this up so you can see this. And I'm just going to tack it every now and again, not going through the thread, or at least trying not to, but just tacking around it. And so I'll maybe go every half inch to an inch. And on some of these curves, I'll tack closer together because I want that gentle curve, that slight curve. I'm not looking for a straight edge. If I was, which is fine, it would just be a different technique and I would have to tack maybe two stitches down to hold that straight edge. So if you wanted to make rectangles in your work, you certainly could. So I'll just kind of play around with the yarn as I go. And it's also very helpful to turn my piece, tacking it down as I go. Now it's kind of hard to get a feel for this because there's so much that I'm seeing here with the yarn and the background here. So I can pull around to see where my stitches are. And again, I just work it, hold it in place, and tack it down. And I can determine how much tension I want by the tightness of the stitches. So if I want it to really bellow out, and that would vary 
based on the yarn that I have. I would tack it down with a really tight stitch. If I wanted it to be loose and gentle, I'd use a much lighter stitch. And sometimes I can even start the stitch and then feed the yarn through to that spot. So you really play around with what works for you with the size yarn or cording that you use. You could use leather cording, you can use suede cording, even some acrylic or plastic lacing would work as well. Now just like when I started, I like to end with a little extra yarn or cording or whatever it is that I'm using to tack down with this couching stitch because that way it gives me a little leeway and I can play with the edge and how I want it to end. So I'll do my last few stitches here and I can use the end of the yarn to really put it in position and get it the exact curve that I want. And then when I'm ready to end my couching, I can just really hold it down in place and stitch multiple stitches for that last ending spot. And that really holds it in place pretty well. If you have yarn that comes undone, you can always add a dab of glue just at the ends so they don't fray. If there's any doubt, then I'll just flip it over, make my final stitch, knot it off and snip it. Now, as you can see, this is the back of the piece. You can see how the stitches traveled across the length and you get some idea of how it meandered. But from the front, you get that beautiful meandering stitch. Now from here, I could go back and add additional stitches if I wanted. I could add more embroidery floss in different colors to give it a little contrast. I could fill in areas here because I have these interesting shapes or I could use beads. I'm gonna leave this as it is, but as you can see, the ideas and the possibilities are really endless. So that's how I make the meandering couching stitch. I just think it's very effective. You can embellish it further with beads and buttons and additional pieces of either strips of fabric or more laces and yarn. It's really up to you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And don't forget to click on that bell and that way you'll get notified of all future videos that I put out. Thanks for joining me today.